The next feature of Test Studio that I'm going to demonstrate is how to data drive your tests. So let's go back to our test that we had that was selecting the make, model, and color. Let's run that. And if you recall, this test was bringing up this form and selecting from the three drop downs the make, model, and color. Now that's just doing one series of combinations. What if you wanted to test other combinations or even all the combinations to make sure that everything works correctly and generates the right message? You certainly wouldn't want to have to create separate tests for every possible combination of values. Test Studio allows you to do that by setting up variables in your test and feeding it a data source that it can then iterate through and run the same test multiple times, replacing those values with different, different data values. So let's start by making a copy of our test to work from. So we'll copy and paste. And then we'll rename to selecting any make, model, and color shows the correct message. And we'll open that. And the first thing I want to do is change the navigate URL so that instead of using the ASP.NET site, instead I'm going to use a local copy of the same site. And let's go ahead and run that real quick just to make sure it works locally. Okay, everything looks good. And now we need to set up our data source. So we do that by going back over to the project and you can see this window here, we don't have any data sources configured yet. When we do that up here under the data sources panel, we can click add and there are these four choices. We can choose an Excel file, a comma separated value file, an XML file, or a data going against the database. This is a good array of choices. Excel files, CSV files are very easy to work with. XML is a little more cumbersome to work with, but if you if you're if you're good at using XML, and if you've already got data in XML files that would be good for testing, then you know that's certainly a good option. Or you can go straight against the database. You can query your database, right? Set up some queries, sort procedures to pull out some testing data, do things dynamically that way. For this demo, I'm going to use a CSV file and you can either browse or just paste the path in and you'll see that that adds the data source to the list over here. Once the data source is added, you can view it by selecting it, clicking edit. And here we can see that we have make model color and message and then several rows choosing different models colors and we also have a fail row here that will then demonstrate the failure process will show that the rest of the data still continues okay now that we have our test and we have our data source set up we can bind the test to the data source so we can click bind test we select our data source, which is the CSV file. And you can see here it shows us the data from the file. And we can do some pretty good filtering here. We can filter the number of rows that we want. We can give a start row and an end row. Or we can filter by column. If by clicking on the filter icon, you can choose any of the options that it sees in there or you can just show rows that are equal to a certain value, greater than, less than, contains. Uh, there's even matching case options. And you can do this on all the columns. So some pretty good filtering capabilities there. We're gonna just use all the rows in this case. Now that we have our test bound to our data set, we need to modify the test so that it knows how to read the values out of the file going to need to modify these select values, the select steps, and this final weight. So this is the first one where we are setting the make value. So the first thing we have to do in here is we want to change this drop down type from value to text. When you're working with uh, data sets and data binding, you need to have it set to by text instead of by value. So we change that and then over here in the bindings and the properties for this step under data driven bindings collection, 
we ch want to choose text because we're doing by text and this is the make on the first one so we choose make in that list and hit set and that's all we need to do there come down to the next one change this to by text and this is the model set that and for this one same thing and this will be the color and then for the message we don't need to change the type because this isn't a drop down it's already text for this one we just have to come over here and set the expected string to message and that should be it let's go ahead and run that and see what happens okay so we can see it here starting to go through executing each iteration as it goes through the file this one here will pause because that was our failed one our intentional fail and there it's gone through it ran through all the iterations we do have one failure message but if we check the log we're going to see that that was this iteration here which was when we were trying to when we had the forced fail so that was expected so otherwise I ran through all the uh, all the options in our file just fine you've probably noticed that even though we have set these up to be data driven steps the original values still display both in the description of the step and in the selection test value technically these values aren't being used for anything anymore you could remove it from here you could edit the value here to show that you were using a data driven value however you want to do it this is just descriptive text so you can change that to be anything you want the main reason that the values are left in the selection test is if you were ever later to decide you didn't want to data drive if you wanted to unbind your test then all your original values would still be there and the data wouldn't be thrown away